EA Sports. It's in the game. MVP Baseball 2005. Baseball games have been a thing since forever. You got your MLB The Shows, you got your MLB 2Ks, you got your RBI Baseballs, you got your All-Star Baseballs, you got your Ken Griffey Juniors and your Tony La Russa's. There's been a multitude of baseball games, all right? But one game rises above all the rest, and that game is MVP Baseball 2005. But before we can get to that, we gotta go back, back, back. Way back, 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 back! To 1995. Which sounds like it's not too long ago, but then you think about it for more than two seconds, and then you realize it's almost a quarter of a century ago. EA Sports released their first baseball game, Triple Play 96 for the Sega Genesis. Triple Play 96 sure is a 1990s baseball game. It has all your favorite teams like New York NL and Ghetto USA. Judging by the name, I'm assuming this is an Elias for the Detroit Tigers. The game is rather straightforward and simple. Pick your pitch, which by the way is completely ridiculous because everyone is just rocking knuckleballs and screwballs like it's nothing, and pitch it. For batting, you just swing. There's this little two-step thing you can do, but whatever. The game has some really great animations for the time, but let me tell you the best feature in this game. The spitting. God damn it. Yeah, there's not a whole lot to say about this game. It's a standard baseball game from the 2D era, but why bring it up? Cause every legend starts somewhere. Over the next years, the Triple Play series would receive numerous releases, eventually moving on to the PS1 where the series would stagnate until the PS2 where we would get the final installment with Triple Play 2002. Here's a ground ball up the middle. They complete the play for the out. Soon after, EA would rebrand the series into MVP Baseball. It's hit hard to deep left field. A three-run homer. One home run allowed by Schilling. And just look at this. Look at this graphical leap right here. Not even graphical. Animation-wise, too. Everything. These games look like they're running on a completely different generation of consoles, but they're not. MVP 2003 and 2004 would lay the groundwork for the most complete baseball game we've ever seen. The MVP series would introduce new directional hitting, hitting in which you can push, pull, or go up the middle with the analog stick. Moving the stick up and down can influence fly balls and ground balls as well. Combine these two with a timely press of the swing button and you'll be destroying any shift that's sent your way. There's also Hitter's Eye that was introduced in MVP 2005. The Hitter's Eye makes it easier to decipher pitches by colorizing certain pitches. White for fastballs, green for off speed, red for breaking ball, orange for knuckleball. On the pitching side, there's a new pitching meter. The more the meter gets filled up, the more energy you use. You hold the button down and release it when you feel that you've used enough energy. The meter comes back and you stop it in a specific area for accuracy of the pitch. Okay, so here's why I brought up the first triple play game. When it comes to baseball games, a lot of them were similar. They all had similar mechanics for hitting and pitching. Let's look at RBI Baseball. You swing by, lining yourself up with the pitch and pressing a button. To pitch, you press a button and move the D-pad. Ken Griffey Jr. Baseball. You swing by lining yourself up with the pitch and pressing a button. To pitch, you press a button and move the pitch with the D-pad. The 2020 Super Baseball, I guess. You swing by lining yourself up with the pitch and pressing a button. To pitch, you press a button and move the pitch with the D-pad. 
Not even the distant, distant year of 2020 can change up the formula. I hope I live to see that year. The triple play series fell into this same formula as well. That's why MVP shattered the mold for baseball games. The new hitting and pitching interfaces blew the other stuff out of the water and made it a distant memory. MVP is a series that made gameplay come first and foremost. Here is a quote by Ben Brinkman, associate producer of MVP Baseball 2005. One of our goals at the beginning of this project was to have a game that ran consistently at 60 frames per second. We met this goal on all platforms. I don't know too many games that can say that. In doing so, we made some sacrifices such as cutting base coaches. I know this could be a game killer to some people, but as a longtime gamer, I would take 60 frames per second any day of the week over base coaches who are there just to be nothing more than eye candy. A smooth playing game is the ultimate to me, but I could be wrong. This says a lot. In today's day and age, we seemingly put graphics and presentation above everything. We get higher resolutions and better textures, but in turn, we get lower frame rates and less responsive gameplay. MVP was also a very responsive game because of its quick and fluid animations. With sports games today, we have scripted animations to give the look of real life, but not the feel of a fun game. Let's look at some examples. Look at this crossover in NBA 2K. This doesn't happen because of user skill. It happens because ratings and scripting come into play. And it happens like this because it gives the game the ooh highlight reel factor, supposedly. I don't think it does. When does a crossover ever look like this? It looks like Avatar Aang blasted him in the back with a gust of air. Another example, here's a deep ball in Madden. As soon as you press the catch button, it's just dependent on the rating and the luck at that point. No useful user input at all. As soon as the animation activates right here, the outcome is already decided that this will be a catch because it is a catch animation. Not even a safety coming in on the play can make a difference because this is a two-person animation. He can't interfere with the play, and no one else can interfere until it ends. This play in MLB The Show has the player run an extra five steps just to touch the wall because it's not realistic just to throw the ball when you actually get it. The play costs the team on defense an extra base. In MVP Baseball, there's none of this. Everything happens as soon as you press a button. There was never any moment where I played the game and said, damn fielding animation, or anything like that. He's got it! What a tremendous diving play! MVP Baseball also shines in its game modes. You have Dynasty and Owners mode. In Dynasty, you control a team for up to 140 seasons. You control the MLB team, yeah, but you can also control all the minor league teams as well, including single A. While Dynasty mode might sound like a run-of-the-mill franchise mode, it does so many little things that modern games just don't do today. You guys got your checklist ready? Alright. Rain out, which can lead to double headers, being able to create your own stadium and make updates along the way, change the prices of the vendors, schedule fan promotions, charge the mound, which can lead to suspensions, have mid-season contract extensions, having scouting reports on the upcoming team you're facing, look at player scouting reports at any time, stat track minor league stats, mini games for player progression, and being able to argue calls whenever you want, which can lead to ejections. Now let's take a look at that list. Whoa. Yeah, that's certainly a lot this game has to offer. Now, I'm not really here to bash MLB The Show in any sort of way. As a matter of fact, I actually really like those games. But it's kind of the only baseball game on the market right now, and it's the only thing I can really compare it to. So, let's compare. Oh my goodness, I can't believe what I'm seeing. Not a single thing. Not one. How is this possible? How can a series from 2005 do something significantly better than a series that's still going damn near 15 years later? I can only think of one thing. When MVP was released, it was during a time where there weren't any online updates or DLC. When you release a game, that's it. There's no updates you can make, and the only money that the game would make is from sales and sales alone. This changed during the late 2000s, when online would enable companies to make changes to an early release video game, and later on with the addition of Madden Ultimate Team, a game mode that heavily encourages in-game spending. Since then, companies can release incomplete products and make more money with these in-game purchases, and that 
my friends, is why the show is vastly behind MVP Baseball. The show has their Diamond Dynasty mode, which is essentially a Madden Ultimate Team mode. And since that mode makes a lot of money, they put less and less and less time in their franchise mode, which has been the same for years minus some little tweaks here and there to the UI. Just think, MVP Baseball and all games like it had to be as complete as they possibly can be because they didn't have an ultimate team mode to make money on. All of the legends and classic stadiums aren't hidden behind a paywall. They're unlockables that you earn through in-game progression. They have to offer as much content as they possibly can because MVP Baseball is competing with like four other baseball games. But a couple of months before the release of MVP Baseball 2005, something big was going down. EA inks a deal with the NFL that changed the landscape of sports gaming to this very day. A deal that gives EA sole rights to make NFL games. In an instance, NFL 2K was killed and 2K was devastated. Well, you might be asking yourselves, hey, what does this have to do with the baseball video games? And I'll tell you, literally a week later, 2K inks a deal with MLB for the exclusive rights to make MLB games. It was almost in retaliation. The only thing is that first party studios can make games. But last time I checked, EA doesn't have any kind of video game console. Leaving first party studios available to make games inevitably killed the MLB 2K series because the show was better in vastly every single way, except commentary. Oh, and he botches it! When this deal was made, it meant the death of MVP Baseball. As an MLB series, EA wanted to continue the series, so in 2006 and 2007, we would get MVP 07 NCAA Baseball. These games innovated even more in terms of gameplay. There were new hitting and pitching mechanics. For hitting, you have the load and fire hitting system. The basic swing mechanic works like this. To load or start your swing, move the right analog stick down. When it's time to fire or complete your swing, move the right analog stick up. For pitching, you have the rock and fire pitching system where pitching is done with the right analog stick. Select your pitch type by pressing one of the corresponding buttons. Use the left analog stick to control the desired location of your pitch. To start your delivery, pull straight down on the right analog stick. Once you reach the green zone, press up on the right analog stick to deliver your pitch. A pitch delivered outside of the green zone will not be as effective. These are huge because both of these features were straight up copied in MLB The Show. No, I'm not exaggerating at all here. This is straight up some let me copy your homework type shit. But, alas, even with how great the game is, it still sold incredibly poorly. It even launched with a discounted $30 price tag. After low sales, this was the official death of MVP Baseball franchise as a whole. So... Where are we today? Well, the modding community still keeps the game alive with updated presentation and rosters. These are pretty cool, albeit nothing spectacular. I like how they try and go the extra mile with altering the announcer's words to make it sound like they're saying new names. Next up, Jeff Giorgio. There's only two MLB games still currently going. MLB The Show and RBI. Ew! Ew! Ah! Ah! There's only one MLB game still currently going. MLB The Show. So you're probably thinking, hey, since 2K's dead, MVP can come back, right? Well, let's look into that. The short answer is, I don't know. The long answer is, MVP is a game that prioritizes gameplay first and foremost. Yeah, that's good, right? Gameplay is king, right? Well, not exactly. In this day and age of 4K graphics and lifelike models and beard physics and realism, realism is just as important, if not even more, to a lot of casual players. The main detriment to the MVP series was the lack of any good presentation. Let's take a look at all the things EA needs to do in order for MVP Baseball to make a comeback. Make a deal with the MLBPA to make a baseball game. Find developers to make said game. Make said game from the ground up keep the budget of the game in check, and make a profit. That's a lot to ask for from a baseball game. While MLB The Show is good and sells well, it's not the juggernaut that Madden or 2K Basketball is. EA would be taking a huge risk to make and release this game, and if they were to release it, it would be opposing a series that's well established with its own fan base. But let's take a look at another EA franchise. NBA Live has been free-falling as a series since the early 2010s. 
In 2010, NBA Live got a completely new developmental team and a completely new title of NBA Elite. It was canceled weeks before release and the series went on hiatus. In 2012, NBA Live went through another development team, went back to the live name, and it was canceled again. The future games will come out to poor critical reception and even poorer sales. While things have apparently been better recently for the series, these sales are still rather eh. My point is, you can reboot and cancel your basketball series twice, only to end up with sales like this. A hypothetical MVP baseball reboot wouldn't be too profitable, but this is. But I guess you can't release a game with sales like this. Except they did that with this game. And 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 this game. But hey, those are just the exceptions, not the rule, right? But it doesn't really matter anyway. Even if MVP Baseball were to come back today, it really wouldn't be the game we remember. There would probably be a heavy focus on an ultimate team mode that has microtransactions, and gameplay would come second fiddle to that. MVP Baseball was just a game that was way ahead of its time, but unfortunately, and kind of funny, that was the only time the game could actually be released.